welcome to the Morning Scoop for Wednesday, September 27th. My name is Ryan McClincy, and I am very excited to bring you today's episode. But before we dive in, just make sure you like this video as it is your support that allows us uh, here at Buckeye Nation to continue to producing the content that you crave. So now, let's not waste any more time and get you your daily Buckeye fix. So please join me in welcoming my guest this morning, the recruiting guru himself, Bill Green. Bill, welcome to the podcast. Hey, man, good to be here. Good to have you. How are you doing? Uh, everything's uh, doing well, doing well. Uh, you know, got through this uh, past weekend, big one for Ohio State, and then, uh, you know, on to Rutgers this week, which I don't think will be much more than a scrimmage and, you know, but hey, big win last week, 4-0 and, uh, yeah. you know, keep moving it forward. Well, if Greg Schiano has anything to say, uh, you know, he's he's expecting a win, apparently, according to uh, the talking <laughs> heads and everything. So, uh, yeah, well, he should. I mean, he should. That's his job. <laughs> right, right. Well, uh, well, I appreciate you uh, you jumping on this morning. Uh, obviously, we we have some recruiting news and, and discussion to, yeah. to go over. The message boards have been... Uh, pretty, pretty uh, hopping with uh, with some specific recruits that we'll dive into here. Uh, I know Kirk and I had talked a little bit yesterday on the podcast just about the actual impact that an environment like that, um, you know, for a game like Wisconsin can bring to to the recruiting trail, you know, blackout, blowout, raucous crowd, um, so everything kind of aligning, you know, for for this recruiting weekend, especially and, and not to mention just being stockpiled with a ton of top recruits, both committed and uncommitted. And I uh, wanted to shout out the Scoop member Buckeye or Buck NY for this comprehensive list here uh, of all the recruits that were there. So just wanted to kind of get your initial thoughts and, and rumblings on what you're hearing. Uh, specifically, obviously, the Keon Keeley news is, is kind of uh, at the forefront of everybody's mind. But uh, what are you hearing on that front? Yeah, I think it was a huge hit for Ohio State to get him back. Uh, a couple of weeks after he visited for Wisconsin. I think Ohio State has put their best foot forward on this, and that's Larry Johnson. That relationship is strong. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think maybe four or five weeks ago when Keon decommitted from Notre Dame, you know, my thought at the time was watch out for the crystal balls to come flowing in for Alabama. They did. Um, and I said at the time, I thought there was a crack there uh, that allows Ohio State to jump in there. I still feel that way. I would feel stronger today had he went ahead and canceled that Bama visit. I guess, they, you know, and I, I was thinking more along the lines of when they landed JT to a Maloha a couple of years ago, and that's mm -hmm. kind of the way that thing went with him. Um, and maybe I was a little bit premature um, in kind of thinking that might happen. Um, and the fact that it didn't happen and I do believe he is going to take that Alabama official visit. I don't think it means that Ohio State is out of this by any means for Keon Keeley. Um, you know, that him canceling, not going to Bama would have been the knockout blow in my, in my opinion. But the fact that it didn't happen, he's going to visit Bama. I don't think it means Ohio State's out of it at all. You're either good enough or you're not. Um, this is a comfort and relationship thing. I don't think that has changed in the past 20, 25 years since I've been covering recruiting, NIL is always a factor. It's new and it is a factor, but yet I don't think it's the going to be the defining thing for Keon Keeley. So do I think Ohio State is in this one? Absolutely. Uh, do I think they can win it? Yes. Um, and if I had to put a crystal ball pick in, I might put it in for Ohio State right now. My guys in Florida who thought he was a lock to Bama a month ago, don't feel that way right now. So, and I trust those guys. They've been on the money a lot in the past how many years? So, um, you kind of got to play it out, see where it leads. I like where Ohio State is sitting. I would like that chair a lot better if he wasn't visiting <laughs> right. Bama, but I don't think that's the knockout blow for Ohio State by, by any means. Do you see, uh, I guess, kind of, uh, is this a long term? second signing day kind of uh, progress here? Do you see kind of any any sort of traction earlier than that? I don't think he'll be a second signing day guy. I don't think that at all. I think a commitment, I think, will come um, by the end of the month, and end of October, not, not September. By the end of October, I think we're going to know. But I'm just trying to put the tea leaves together there on that one. But I don't think he would be a second signing day guy. 
I don't think so at all. But you know, we'll find out. But uh, the next, the next big thing is is the Bama visit, the official visit, yeah. and um, so that's you know, I think it's two weeks away. So, and I think it's the A and M game, I believe. So it's going to be you know all the things you talked about, you know, raucous yeah. crowd, great atmosphere, you know, all that. So it'll come down to comfort and relationships. And you just have to hope that Larry Johnson has done Larry Johnson things and, and, and it's where Keon wants to be. Yeah. Larry Johnson's one of the, one of the best in the game. So you can't ever really count him out. Uh, nope. Can't count Nick nope. Saban out either, but you know, <laughs> it's uh, it's two Titans going head to head, which is always, uh, always interesting to, to watch. Yeah. And I want to add one other thing yeah. for the people that are just freaked out about this official visit to Bama. Um, Brandon Ennis took an official visit to Alabama and then committed to Ohio State, I think, 10 days after that visit. So Nick doesn't get them all. It seems like he gets them all. He doesn't get them all. So, you know, like I said, this is not the death blow for Ohio State, the fact that Keon is still going to visit Alabama. No, absolutely. I think it's a uh, it's a little bit of uh, playing off of the most recent history with the the Caleb Downs saga. You know, that might be playing into that uh, mm-hmm. that fear mm-hmm. fear mongering itself. But um, no, I, yep. I can never count Larry Johnson out for a player like that. And there's still two other big uh, big defensive absolutely. line targets on the board that uh, that are still out there and and very good from what I I understand from what you're hearing. A very good uh, place for Ohio State with uh, with both of them as well. So. Uh, definitely not out of it for for any of the big three, um, and obviously this this past weekend I know you uh, you mentioned there was a lot of twenty twenty five recruits, um, so not not a lot of traction with anything there. But there was another big name, a uh, fairly big name with was it Caden McDonald, correct? Yeah. Yes. Anything? Uh, uh, anything? Any news? Anything you're hearing from that visit or or kind of where Ohio State would land? Yeah, that one's a little little uh, less. I know it, uh, the conventional wisdom is that Clemson has that one on lockdown and over and Dabo's just waiting for the final commitment, but it's done. And, and I don't feel that's the case at all. Um, you know, I think Ohio State is in that one. And again, you know, you got to see how this visit resonates with Caden, um, Southern kid, I don't know. You know, I didn't, I didn't get as much info on him as I did on Keon. I just was told that everything went really well and Ohio state likes the position they're in. I think conventional wisdom Clemson is, you know, the leader right now and did Ohio state do enough to knock Clemson out of it. I don't know. I think Ohio state would take him with open arms. I think they, they, I think they like that kid a lot more than what his ranking would be. Um, and I, and I think he's, uh, he's a high target on the board for them. So we'll see where that, where it goes with them. I uh, wish I had more info in that situation. I just think all I was told is that Ohio state felt really, really good about their presentation, about where they are with Caden McDonald. It's still good news. Always good news. Uh, Ohio state yeah. does, uh, does recruiting visits up there with the, the best. Yep. yep. So, so you yep. can't ever knock it out. And, uh, and if, uh, if the staff likes him, then I like him. So I will gladly, uh, gladly take that position <laughs> if, uh, if they like Absolutely. it. Um, now speaking of just kind of overall class, uh, I know right now Ohio state currently sits at the, uh, the fourth rank, uh, fourth ranked class for, uh, 2023 on the, the two, four, seven composite, uh, right now, 20 commits average rating of 93.22, I believe it was, which is, uh, second only to, to Alabama, of course. Um, so I guess, how do you kind of see this, this class finishing? I know there's obviously another big name that's, uh, that's on the top of everybody's mind with Dijon Johnson and, and that whole saga. So how do you see the, the class kind of finishing and, um, and where, do, where does the, the staff go from here? Yeah, when you look uh, on the offense, they're, they're close to done, I think, on offense. And, you know, would they take a five-star stud offensive tackle or something dropped in their laps? I think they would. Um, I think they're very, very happy with Jelani Thurman at tight end, as they should be. Four wide receivers, Mark Fletcher is your running back. They got the QB. So I think offense, I mean, this could be it. It wouldn't shock me if the Hayes in the barn there. Defensively, um, you know, they've got a lot of DBs committed right now. They would have taken Caleb Downs in a second. They would take Caleb Downs today in a second. They'll take him a night before signing yeah. day in a second. And there is some 
communication still going on there. I don't think that thing is totally dead. Um, if that kid shows up for the Michigan game, it's game on. And we got to see. Uh, I think that's being discussed. There's a chance on that one. Um, then you got Dijon Johnson. That has been a crazy one from, you know, the time he decommitted. I think might have been back in July, I think it was, or maybe in August. I don't know. That one, I don't think it's over, mainly because I think, I think Dijon decommitted because he wanted to look around at some other schools. There are some family considerations there in his life, um, some complications there. Um, he did want to look at Florida. He did want to look at Miami. And I think he felt disrespectful to do that as a committed member of this Ohio State class. So he bowed out of the class, was very upfront with the coaches, and you know, that he wanted to look at more options. Well, I, he never committed anywhere after that. Mm. When it was rumored that, oh, he's going to commit to Florida today, he's going to commit tomorrow, it's coming, it's got, it never, it has never come. Okay, Miami, I don't think is in the picture at all. I think Dijon, you know, I'm, I'm kind of guessing, I, my guess is that he would like to be back in this class. Um, and I think Ohio State is going to do their due diligence there. I think they're still, there's communication with Dijon, but I think, you know, that I think Ohio State might feel kind of like when your girlfriend breaks up with you and, mm -hmm. you know, and then she decides she wants to come back. And it's like, you know, we get, let's start this recruiting process all over again and see where it leads. Yeah. So I think, I think Dijon, am I calling him back into the class? No, no. Am I saying the lines of communication are open? Yes. And I would leave it at that. I mean, he's a great player. And, um, this one will fall in Ryan Day's lap on how he wants to proceed. Um, I think Ohio State can get him if they want him. I think they can get him, and you know they they have to feel comfortable with Dijon that if you take him back, he's not going to decommit in three weeks. Yeah. So I would say the line of communication is open with Dijon. I would say the line of communication is open with Caleb Downs. Not calling either guy into this class. I'm just saying. Don't write those names off. Keep those names, keep them handy, okay? And then next you've got to look at the linebacker room, which I, I have nothing there. I mean, I don't think they wanted to go with no linebackers in this class. Yeah. I know Arbel Reese is kind of looked at as a linebacker. Ted Ginn told me he's going to end up being a down lineman. He's going to end up being 275 pounds. Teddy's pretty good at this stuff. So we'll see there. And then, you know, you get the big three defensive ends. You have Caden McDonald as a D tackle. So that would kind of shape where they're going on the D line. Um, linebacker room, I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine on that one. I have no names to throw out to you there. Um, and then that DB room, they got a lot of DBs committed right now. Communication still going on with Caleb Downs. Communication still going on with Dijon Johnson. So I think that kind of tells us how Ohio State feels about some of the current DBs on the roster. You know, when you're out yeah. looking to take five, six, seven DBs in a class, I think that speaks for itself. And, uh, you know, I think it is what it is there. So we'll see what happens there. But I think that as we go forward, I think the recruiting that we need to keep an eye on is strictly on the defensive side of the ball. Mm. Yeah, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. And I think uh, to the point of, of DBs, considering the uh, – the lack of depth available right now. Uh, yeah. Probably a welcome welcome sight to, to add as many as we can in this coming class yeah. and, and yeah. refill that. So uh, definitely, definitely agree with you on that front. Where do you, I guess, how many more do you think this uh, this staff kind of adds in, uh, in the, the final days here of, of the recruiting cycle? Yeah, that's a tough one there. I mean, because I think they would take Caden McDonald. They would take all three of those defensive ends if they could get them. Uh, they've got to do something at the linebacker spot. You got to take one at least. Yeah. I think they'd like to have two. And then if Caleb Downs wants in, I don't care what the numbers are, he's coming back. And then they'll, you'll figure the numbers out later. And then what do they do with Dijon? So, you know, I think the number is kind of hazy right now. It's hard to put mm -hmm. it, hard to put a figure on this right now because there are a lot of guys that they're looking at that they're going to take no matter what the numbers yeah. are. OK, and those three DNs, if they would get Keon Keeley in the next couple of weeks 
and then get Damon Wilson in the next couple of weeks. There's no way they're ta- they're telling Mateo Uyangalele no on signing day because, oh, we're filled. That ain't going to happen. Caleb Downs, they're never going to tell him, no, we're filled. I don't care what the numbers are. They'll make room for guys yeah. like that. So it's hard. To, I can't put a number on it right now because there are a lot of guys out there that aren't going to be deciding soon that they're going to make room for. Yeah. So that, that one's kind of tough to do, to put a specific target number out there. I think the uh, the boards might melt down <laughs> if uh, if the staff told one of them no. Uh, That's not going to happen. To get into the class. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, know there's also there's also been some rumors of uh, of potentially Justice Haynes um in in kind of you know revisiting anything there obviously another another Alabama commit um is there any updates or any any information you have on kind of that conversation or where that that's trending I really don't I don't have anything there um that would be the type of thing that if he shows up <clears throat> I mean it would open my eyes and think that he's going to be in the class I don't think you take a visit against Nick Saban's wishes with the intent of, oh, I was just, I just wanted to go there and look around, but I'm good with you. Now, I don't think you do that to the GOAT. So yeah. Justice Haynes shows up at Ohio State. I mean, that would make me think he's probably going to be in the class. And that's kind of the way I feel about Caleb Downs as well. Mm. You know, if you go against the GOAT late in the process, you know, I, I just I just don't see that happening unless one of them, you know, would go ahead and decommit from Alabama and then take the visit with the intention of coming to Ohio State. So yeah. I, I guess my short answer would be if Justice Haynes or Caleb Downs shows up at Ohio State for a game and a visit, I would think they're going to be in. Yeah, no, I think I think you're you're spot on there. Um, yeah, you definitely don't. Uh... What Nick Saban go, says goes uh, for for the most case if you're if you're there. So uh, I think we all yeah. know that, and I think they know and that. I think and Ryan Day, yeah, I think Ryan Day would be the same way. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, you, you don't want this is these guys have been recruited for a while now. This is not early in the process. We're getting yeah. late in the process. If you look at like weeks away, signing day is not that many weeks away. So this is late now in the process. We're getting into October. So. I would think if you're not sure you want to be at a place like Alabama or Ohio state or Georgia, you're probably not going to be there. Yeah. Okay. This is not, this is too late in the game to be taking a look and see visit. It's too late. Yep. So if you're taking a visit this late in the game, you mean business. Yeah. I think case in point with, uh, with Ryan day feeling the same way as the Dijon Johnson. Absolutely. He, he can accept it any, any day he chooses, uh, assuming everything lines up and, you know, there there is definitely a, a level of trust and and kind of uh, desire, you know, to to being committed yeah. and, and staying. So, a hundred percent under agree with that, and and I, I yeah. agree. I think Ryan Day would would stand in the same stances as, as Nick Saban with that. Sure and, and I think we're seeing that with Dijon Johnson. I mean, yeah. had Dijon never decommitted from Ohio State, they were never going to push him out of the class. I mean, he was one of the crown jewels of that DB class. But n- since he did decommit and now possibly may want back in, mm. there's, there's a little bit of hesitancy there on Ohio State's part. And I get that. I mean, I support Ryan Day 100% in, yep. in, the, in doing his due diligence. You know, I, I think it's the right way to go about when you're Nick Saban or Ryan Day or Kirby Smart or Lincoln Riley. You look at things a lot differently when you're at one of these top power programs than you would be a middling ACC school. Yeah or Indiana or something like that. Ryan Day's earned the right. He's he's he can be very very selective where a middling school can't really do that. Yeah. Absolutely. And also uh it it gives me shades of uh, Eli Ricks not to not to yeah. throw that log back on the fire there. Um <laughs> but uh, Don't do that. Right, Don't do that. Right. <laughs> uh he's still coming, didn't you hear? Um <laughs> But uh, but no, obviously a ton of of recruiting left in a, in a very short period. Uh, yeah. Lots and lots of of highly touted recruits still available. Uh, so Buckeye fans, we'd love to hear your thoughts as well. So be sure to let us know which uh, which of these recruits you're coveting the most, uh, and leave them in the comments below or follow us and, and reach out on Twitter. Uh, we'd love to hear exactly kind of where your thoughts are and how you think this class finishes as well. Now, obviously, the big games like Wisconsin are going to bring in the top recruits, like we just mentioned. 
um, curious, you know, uh, how does a staff like, like Ryan Day's staff kind of navigate through the less than marquee matchups for recruiting and, and what kind of plays into some of that? Uh, yeah, I would think going forward, um, you know, barring Caleb Downs showing up, you know, um, someone like that, this is, they're turning their eyes to 2025 yeah. right now. I mean, and, and you're trying to set yourself up, um, you know, for that class. And, and it's more of a feeling out process right now. Um, most of the attention deservedly is going to finish this 2023 class, get through the end of the year. Then you start looking at those 2025s, but a lot of the seeds are being planted now yeah. for those kids. You want to get them back next year for the spring game, for a visit during June camps. That's when things get really serious. Right now, you're just planting a lot of seeds for the 2025 class. Um, now, like you say, if Caleb Downs springs up and shows up for the Penn State game, or well, would, you know, Michigan game is what they're targeting. You know, that's the one. He shows up on campus for that. He's going to get all the attention. You know. Yeah. And there's no chance he shows up this week for Rutgers. But if he does, he gets up Saturday morning or Friday night and he comes for that, he's going to get all the attention. Mm. So any 2025 that's on the plan A list would happen to show up, you know, for, for a home game, they're going to get all the attention. I don't, ex you know, nothing imminent in the next month or so. So you're going to plant the seeds with these 2025s and see where you're at with those guys. Yeah, no, I mean it, it's all about relationships, as uh, as you've said countless yeah, times. Absolutely. So now is uh, now is a great time to to start creating those and and really being able to to cultivate them over their uh, their entire high school career, so that uh, that you're kind of in the in the fold when it comes down to it. But uh, amazing insight as always, Bill. Uh, very excited to see which of these recruits ultimately end up with a tree eventually in Buckeye Grove, hopefully. So uh, when it's all said and done, of course, but. With that, uh, the morning scoop is a wrap. So thanks again, Bill, for for joining us today. Always a pleasure having you and uh, very much looking forward to continuing to, to have you on and doing this again next week. Thank you. I appreciate it. And as always, thank you, Buckeye Nation, for listening and or watching. Uh, and for more great Ohio State content, be sure to download, like, and subscribe to the Morning Scoop podcast, uh, available wherever you listen to podcasts. And be sure to subscribe to the Buckeye Scoop YouTube channel. All of this and so much more is always available at thebuckeyescoop.com. Uh, while you're there, do yourself a favor. Check out the Ask the Insiders board. A lot of what we've been discussing today, a lot of that material and conversation is always ongoing. So don't be afraid. Join in. Join the incredible community of Buckeye fans on the most premier site for all of your Ohio State needs. I am your host, Ryan McClincy. And until tomorrow, go Bucks.